We spent the past couple of years in a crazy hot market. Louisville home sales decline as demand outpaces supply. Effective communication is at the core of any situation. If you master these two ideas, you'll have a chance of being successful at residential real estate marketing. I think you need to be looking for investment opportunities that move the needle. The market will never crash if demand exceeds supply. This is what I've been telling you all along. This is the Jay Pitt Show. And we're back, folks. Welcome back to the Jay Pitts Show, Talk Radio 1080. I am your host, Jay Pitts, um, here with my co-host, Mr. Ryan Harris. We'll see what he has in store for us today. Ryan, what's up, man? Uh, a lot. We have we have a lot on the on the segment topics. So I'm looking forward to this episode. But yeah, I feel like we open these up the same way every time. Well, you know, it's kind of automatic. I'm okay with that. I don't flub that way. Yeah, no, I mean, it gets us talking about something random in the beginning. But that's good, though. Like, I literally, if you heard just a hint of a pause, I almost asked Ryan if we were talking about fighting giraffes today on today's episode. (laughs) That seems to be, uh, I am notorious now as the guy who thinks he can beat a giraffe in a fight. Yeah, and if the listeners are unaware, in one of the recent episodes we were talking about, what is the largest animal you think you could essentially beat up with your bare hands yeah in a fight with no weapons yeah and uh that video clipped it p- posted on social media did really well and nobody believes jay can beat up a giraffe <laughs> not, not and my f- i am included not my friends not the internet trolls not anyone a lot of people think it's hilarious though i'll say I- there weren't as many trolls on that post it was like you could tell it was just real people commenting like <laughs> what they thought somebody said a koala bear pretty good answer <laughs> a small small a small dog like i mean like I, and i hate that idea like that we're even talking about this still but uh a lot of people were quite realistic i recognize and if, you, if let's just be fair if you go back to the episode i do in fact say that i don't believe that I can actually beat a giraffe in a fight. I mean, I said alligator. So. You said alligator, and you seemed very sincere when you said it. And I thought, yeah. no, no shot. But uh, I, th- I, I like to think that I might be able to take out a leg and like last a little bit. I don't think the the giraffe neck baseball bat comment was really going to come to fruition. Yeah, no shot. All right, let's let's pivot. Yeah, we'll cover the show topics here in a sec, but I do have something else on that topic. Uh, kind of funny, like not kidding. I was watching some National Geographic show a couple of days ago, and they start talking about this thing called a buffalo jump, and it's a river, and there's a, it's basically a man-made cliff above the river, and what a buffalo jump is, what the internet describes it as, it's a bison jump, it's a cliff formation which indigenous people of North America historically used to hunt and kill plains bison, and it says in mass quantities, so close your ears, but. Basically, there would be these wild bison, and the bison wouldn't know it to drop off, and they'd trick them and chase them towards it, and they'd jump off, and that's how they would kill the buffalo. So uh, that, that, that's barehanded. <laughs> oh, oh, I see where you're going with yeah. this. I was like, how in the so basically, in some way, if you had a buffalo jump to utilize than a buffalo. Basically, but I'm saying we never would have made it because we're not even thinking about tricking. We're not even thinking about tricking. We're, we're thinking like, about bare going, hands. Let's going go. mano Let's a mano. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just funny that came up. I was like, oh, I guess. You have to have a idea. herd of buffalo in this scenario as well. And I, I guess. I'm not real sure. I'm not real sure I would approach a herd of buffalo. You know, hilarious that I happened to talk about with my son this weekend. Random. He, he's He's... He's a pretty brilliant kid, just being honest. My 10 year old's pretty, pretty bright. We talked about animal symbolism this weekend and like the nobility of bison and buffalo. They're like two indigenous cultures, believe it or not. They were a symbol of, of respect, of nobility, of all these like positive traits. Um, whereas cattle were quite the opposite you know, frantic and anxious and things like that. It's, it's really odd, which is funny because your first. Your first guess as to the largest animal you might be able to beat was was a cow. Well, upon further reflection, upon further reflection, the cow. And now you're telling me that you can you can you can actually you know come up victorious against the bison. I, I'm yeah. kind of bet I'm kind of betting that's not going to. So happen. they respected the buffalo, just not enough to drive just them not off enough, a cliff. Just, not, well, th- I'm sure they 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 respected them in their consumption. You know, for for nourishment. That's we're gonna go with that. All right, let's talk about something listeners care about. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll start with story from the field, like we always do. Uh, 
Jack Harlow had a new movie just released. Mm-hmm. Louisville was named number one in a pretty big poll mm-hmm. uh, through Airbnb. Uh, talk about L.A. Mansion Tax, Peloton, Netflix, password sharing. Uh, and then I got a question for you at the end. So okay. uh, we'll go ahead and roll into it. This story from the field. So this actually isn't an agent asking a question. It's a consumer wrote in, hey, Jay, I'm looking for advice on buying my first rental property. I have $50,000 set aside. What precautions should I take? And what are the first steps I need to focus on to make this happen? Okay. Loaded question. Love it. Love the question. All right. So here's here's precautions. Okay. So I, should I take this literally the way that it's written? Or should I expand a little? Uh, I'm going to choose to expand. It's my show. We can do that, right? Yeah. All right. So uh, 50000 is not going to buy you anything in today's market. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to lever that 50,000 or you need to employ leverage. Simply put, you need to borrow money. 50,000 is a decent down payment. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out that the best secondary market financing for investment property is conducted with 25% down. Okay. So you take your 50,000 and you divide that by 0.25 or 25% and it gives you that you can buy up to a $200,000 investment with your 50,000 as down payment. All right, so probably what I will tell you there is you're not going to your best investment's probably not going to be 200. In in Louisville, presuming you're here, your best investment's going to be probably in the 130 to 150 range. We always try to look for a mix of return on investment, simple rate of return, uh and positive cash flow. At least not negative cash flow. Negative cash flow means you have to pull money out of your earned income each month to subsidize the cost, the monthly cost of financing or the monthly cost to operate that investment. And instead of the investment itself generating enough income to cover all of its expenses over the course of a month. That's what we generally look for. We look for positive cash flow, not negative cash flow. Um, I can... I can be okay with some negative cash flow in the rate environment that we have now, expecting that rates will ultimately go down a little. Um, if it's a property that's going to go up in value and you're going to build equity due to appreciation, that's the environment that we are in. Prices are going up, not down. So uh, here's what I'll say. Look in the 130 range and up to 200, probably not 200 because you don't want to like strip out all your 50,000. You'd like to have a few, few bucks on hand. If you do, you know, uh, 130, for example, that's going to put your down payment somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 grand, right? 130, let's see, 25% of 130 is 32.5. So you're going to have 17.5 left. If you, you can use it for some renovations because not every investment you buy is perfectly pristine. So that's probably a good marker. Look for your 130 and you're looking to get as close to $1,300 a month in rent as possible. That's the 1% rule. It's made popular by the Bigger Pockets podcast. I'm not a huge fan of the Bigger Pockets guys, but they do have some good stuff, and that's one of them. Take your acquisition cost and look look and see very simply if you think that you can get close to one percent in rent. In actuality, you're probably looking at like eleven, twelve hundred bucks a month. But the mortgage payment at at twenty five percent down on a hundred thirty thousand dollar purchase is gonna be is gonna be less. Okay, so you're financing 97.5. Let's see you do it at seven and a quarter because interest rates on investment properties are a little higher. The principal interest is 665 bucks. You got probably $250 a month in in uh, taxes and insurance. So that's 915 if you rent for 1150, let's say. Okay, you've got $234 a month in positive cash flow that goes into your bank account that you can use for savings for future expenses. That's how, where I would start. Okay, you've got seventeen five left in the bank, right? You save up to thirty two thousand again. You buy another one, right? You save up to thirty two five again. You buy another one. You can go up to ten properties. So, presuming you you own a primary residence, okay, you can get nine more loans. You can have nine investment properties on thirty year fixed rate mortgages with you know, pretty solid rates. You wait till rates go down, you refi, right? I'm, I'm yep. not a Burr person. Burr is buy, renovate, refinance, and repeat. The refinance part of that means you pull cash out. I'm not a huge fan of that, okay? I like to, I like to borrow as little as, as necessary, 
and uh, I like to get the lowest possible interest rates. So, you know, if you're if you're a W two high income earner that can save money relatively fast, you know, or you're young and you you don't have a family to support, you don't have a lot of people, and your income's pretty decent, you can move pretty far pretty fast with this, right? So that's how I would do it. Um, Got it. I, oh, that's I, perfect. I would I would try to get to as many as possible. Yeah. No, that's great. So you just laid out how to figure out what this person can afford, what they should maybe look for. You know, you talked about the 1% rule. What I'd be really interested to hear next is what's the step to take after that? Yeah. But we got to cut to a couple sponsors here in just a second. We'll, we'll bring it back with your answer to that. And we'll be talking about Jack Harlow's new movie. Uh, Louisville being named the number one summer travel destination. And we got a fun little game we're going to play too in the next segment. So, We'll be back on the J Pitch Show, Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. See you in a sec. Welcome back to the J Pitch Show. I'm your co-host, Ryan Harris. This is Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. So we had a listener write in, ask Jay, you know, they're trying to buy their first rental property. They have $50,000 set aside. What are the steps to take? Jay just laid out. You know how to figure out what they can afford, what they sh- what they should kind of the precautions they should look at, and now you know what I want to know from Jay, and I'm assuming what this listener wants to know is what's the step after that, right? So, so we talked about like a rinse and repeat kind of strategy, right? Like you can deviate from the strategy a little bit as because I, th- I think we had like two hundred and fifty, two hundred thirty eight dollars a month in positive cash flow, so you're going to save approximately, you know. $2,400 a year that can be put towards expenses, that kind of thing. Uh, if you don't have large expenses, then maybe that goes to helping you save for the next down payment. Um, but, you know, 10 rental houses are a pretty good retirement for most folks. If you if you pay those off, because there's there's a cascading effect once you get a lot of positive cash flow. So let's say you do, you do 10, like we said, talked about for round numbers. Well, that's not $238 a month. That's $2,380 a month in positive cash flow that you can apply toward the principle of the first one. So I'm going to ask you to do a Dave Ramsey esque debt cascade with the positive cash flow as you grow. So let's say it takes you, let's say you do one a year. You're, you're just a W two simple wage earner that makes a pretty good income and is very frugal with their money. One a year for 10 years, you start at the age of 25. Okay. So you're 35, you own 10. Okay. You financed everything on 30 year fixed rate mortgages. Right. So presumably the first one could be paid off by the time you're 55 if you take it to term. But you're not going to do that. You're going to take your highest priced interest and you're going to cascade all the positive cash flow to pay down debt. Okay. So you're going to create equity really fast in those and you're going to wait for rates to come down and then you're going to refi and lower the rate but not pull out cash. But then you're going to continue to do that. Okay. So I'm going to give you the boring what to do next. The boring what to do next is pay them all off by the time you're 50. So let's say you could probably pay them off by the time you're 45, all 10 of them. Okay. Even if it took you 10 years to acquire them, you can probably pay them all, all off by the time you're 45. And then let's say that those started off as a thousand dollar a month rentals. They're probably 2000 a month by then. So now you have 20 grand a month free and clear $240,000 a year. Most people can live off that in retirement very nicely. Right. Um, so that's what I do. I'd be boring. Boring makes you rich. Yeah. I, I hope everybody can live off that, but who knows with appreciation. Maybe, maybe <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Uh, but those are assets, by the way. So they're going up in value as well. Okay. So we're, we're, we, yes, we're paying off our debt. Uh, there's no appreciation of the interest. It's going to be higher today than you probably ever borrow at. Uh, at least I hope. And hey, so let's say this, you, you paid 130. What are they worth in 20 years, Ryan? I mean, you can do the yeah, simple math 300. Uh, uh, more than that. Yeah. More than that. If you paid, if you paid 130, they're probably worth 350 in 20 years, presuming 5% annual appreciation. So, so what you can, you do, you can sell one and then you can 1031 tax deferred exchange, talk to a CPA, talk to an attorney before you do that, but you can defer the gain. By investing in a larger property, again, now you only need 25% down like we talked about before, maybe even 20% down if you go to a commercial loan. So now you can take that 350 and you can make it 1.5 million. Yeah. 
and you can start investing in big stuff. So if you want to scale, there's opportunity to do that too. But I, I'm going to encourage everyone listening, be boring. Boring will make you rich. Anyway, there it's you go. Good stuff. I will say I was trying to set you up uh, to say hire an agent. <laughs> <laughs> well, always you need a credible professional to shepherd you through the process. Right? Absolutely. That goes without saying, and all of our listeners are very smart, so they knew that already. They did yeah. not require yeah. me to tell them. Good stuff. I hope uh, that listener you know, got a little help with, from their question they asked, but uh, let's move on. So White Men Can't Jump just released the new one with Jack Harlow. I watched it. Uh, you said you watched it? I did. Yeah. I did. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I w- I'll be honest. wasn't expecting... Like a ton, it was way better than I thought it was going to be. And considering the original is one of my favorite movies of all time, it's a great movie. Uh, you know, I ha- had a lot of expectations to live up to. I, I, I didn't know what to expect from it. Uh, I didn't know what to expect from Jack as an actor. I feel like he was just acting like himself. He you know? he was very much himself. I think he played up some of the new age kind of. But you know, Billy Hoyle. You know, the Woody Harrelson character. Oh, the best. In in the original was just such a just tortured individual, like, and just had, couldn't do anything right. Um I I really appreciate I think I think Billy Hoyle obviously makes the movie, the original. Wesley Snipes was good too, but Woody Harrelson was the best. And uh I didn't know what to expect, but I was pleased. It was it was a pleasant watch. I'm not gonna say it's gonna win an Oscar. You know, but and and I'm not surprised to see the audience score substantially higher than, you know, the Rotten the, Tomatoes. Yeah, on Rotten Tomatoes, the audience score is always fun. Movies always have high audience scores and terrible critic scores. And it was a, it was the, exactly that. It was a fun movie. Yeah, I tell you exactly what played out. How I thought it would with the movie is in the original. Woody Harrelson can play some ball. You yeah. can tell. I mean, and just he dribbles it, and shoots. It looks his pure. His shot was ugly, and, but he makes it. Uh, Jack Carlos is not doesn't quite look the same when he mm-hmm. dribbles. Thought he was great in it, we'll say, but that, sh- that I figured that was going to happen. The shot was okay. The handles were not quite there. Now his now now the other lead and I, I forgive me, I don't know the actor's name, but uh, it, he's got he's got game. You can tell. Oh yeah, you can tell he's got real game. Yeah, it, it was good though. I, I enjoyed it. I'll probably watch it again. I probably so, will too. Uh, thought thought we needed to talk about that hometown hero Jack Carlo, but uh, all right, let's get moving on. So. Louisville named number one U.S. summer travel destination. Airbnb unveiled this year's top summer travel trends, including the top 10 trending destinations in the U.S., and Louisville was number one on that list. So apparently they figured this out by the number one most searched city on Airbnb, and it happened to be Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. I, I So I, I'm curious you know i think we should be we should be honest with ourselves here i mean look city tourism and you know str owners short term rental owners can talk this up and post it all over their socials and you know the whole thing great you know take advantage of this um number 1 i think it is it is incumbent typically upon these types of studies that come out to be slightly contrarian and unexpected if they say Palm Beach, Florida, you know, if they say New York City, if they say Chicago, it's going to be kind of obvious. And there's really then no need for the story itself. Uh, how Also, I will say, I wonder how much Derby has to play yeah. because, you know, Airbnb, you know, we have uniquely kind of, I think, only maybe rivaled by maybe the Indy 500 and there's no majesty you know, surrounding the Indy 500, like there no romanticism, like there is the Kentucky Derby. You know, we have an event in a relatively smaller city with 150,000 plus in attendance where you can't possibly have enough hotels to serve the demand. So prior to Airbnbs being in vogue, renting your home out for a week, it's, it's just part of the culture here. And I think that's spilled over something we see certainly in the, in the real estate community as people, really being into this like i mean there's there's a facebook group here of str owners you cannot get in without proving you're an str owner and there's like more than 2500 members wow. locally so I, I can just tell you there's a lot of interest in that kind of thing here yeah one other thing i, I saw in this article was the city was listed 
as one of the 10 most underrated romantic destinations around the globe. So if you can't find love here, sorry. <laughs> you're out of luck. Maybe you're just not that attractive. I don't know. Oh, man, I don't know. Could be that. Or you're just too annoying. I don't know. Hey, hey, you know what? I found a bride, and she's stayed with me, so there is hope for everyone. How about that? Yeah. How All about right. that? We're going to start... Uh, this next little game I have for you, Jay, we'll probably have to it up in the continue in the next segment. But you're well aware of the kiss, marry, kill, kill, kill game. <laughs> so we're going to switch it up and do it real estate style. Popularly known under other terms. As yeah, well, perhaps. yeah. Keeping okay. it radio yeah. clean, Yeah, uh, which we struggle with. But we're doing pretty good. So we're going to call this represent, refer, fire. So represent. You'll keep them as their, your client, show them homes, refer. You're going to give them to another agent, fire. You want nothing to do with them. Oh. And the three I have for you today, Jennifer Lopez, Britney Spears, Jack Harlow. Okay, so we're keeping on trend here. All right. Um, a, a question before I answer. Is okay. the refer like I'm going to be happy to refer them to someone? Like that person's going to be happy or I'm going to refer to my 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 arch nemesis because I want them to spend all their time working with this person and not other people. Ooh, good question. Uh, whichever I can choose, you decide, I can you choose. choose. I can yeah. choose to go either way, can't I? Uh, what What's the significance behind the selection? Obviously, Jack Harlow, we just talked about, and is a local guy, so I get that. Where, what, what led you to come up with the other So, two yeah, I know something you don't know uh, about Jennifer Lopez, at least, maybe. Uh, Britney Spears was just thrown on there because she's a character. Okay, okay. Well, I think I know where I want to go with this, okay. but I don't have enough before the break to do that. So why don't we cut to a few sponsors real quick, and I'll come back in the third segment with uh, my answer to this represent, refer, or fire on the Jay Pitt Show here on Talk Radio 1080. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back to the Jay Pitt Show. I'm your co-host, Ryan Harris. Talk Radio 1080, real news, real talk. All right, we're playing a new game on this show. We we're talking, you know, kiss, marry, kill. We're doing it real estate style, style. Represent, refer, fire. And the three people I asked Jay about that he has to side between Jennifer Lopez, Britney Spears, Jack Harlow. And he was just starting to give his answer yeah. uh, right before we cut to a break. So, all right, all let's right. hear it, Jack. So, so here's where I'm going to go with this. I, I think I think Jack Harlow's the represent. He's he's a local guy. He's going to buy here in Louisville. I, I I have the, you know, I get to show him houses all over town in the best areas and that kind of thing. It's my state. I'm licensed here. Whatever. Um, and, and that does wonders for your business. Number one. Now, now. Uh, funny enough, Jack Harlow is really close friends with a guy who is known for being a party planner here locally who also has his license recently. I don't think he does a ton of real estate. So if Jack buys a house from someone locally, it'll probably be he him. He can do a ton. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe he already has, and we just don't know it. I mean, that's something that uh, could be kept out of the news, I suppose. All right. So I'm going to go represent on Jack Harlow because I just see what kind of upside that is for your business. Probably, probably would even do it for free. Although he probably wouldn't let me. Yeah, think um, That's a good answer. I'll say we should like consider we're, let's say we're licensed in every state. Okay. All right. All right. Well, still, I, I'm still going to, I'm still going to go with Jack Harlow. Um, now obviously Britney Spears, became popular around the time that I was coming of age. She's actually, I think like my age, my actual age. I think she graduated high school like the same time I did. If she even went to high school. Um, Is that like a big crush? All the guys it, in the high school it, had at it, the time? It was, it was amongst a lot of people. Like when I was probably in high school, I'm sure that's now, falling off. A now she, bit. she went, she went nuts, you know, of course. And I think has maybe redeemed herself slightly, but maybe not. I don't know. I know she did a residency in Vegas and like, I, I don't, don't know how that happened. Uh, I know she's got like high profile legal issues and still like has her money in a conservatorship. I think that her parents I think that was did she, did she get done li with. Did she get liberated? I think so. Um, okay. So that's what I know about free Brit Britney. Free Britney. <laughs> I, so that's what I know about Britney Spears. Jennifer Lopez. Okay. I think might be like the most attractive 50 plus year old woman <laughs> that I've ever seen. So I could get behind that a little bit, but she also was married to Alex Rodriguez and has had two separate relationships, I think, with Ben Affleck. Uh, and she's so, with him again. So so that like judgment 
issue. I don't know. I, I, I might like like marrying Alex Rodriguez. I think is kind of poor judgment. Yeah. Um. And I'm guessing that um, I'm guessing that she would be really high maintenance. So I'm going to refer Jennifer Lopez to my arch nemesis so that she can take up all of their time and maybe never buy anything. And then I'm going to fire Britney Spears because she's just, I think, cray cray. Got it. All right. Pretty good. I, uh, I'll give you my answers. All right. I'm going to look at it a little different way than you. And I'll talk first <laughs> about, so Jennifer Lopez has fallen out of escrow three times in the last like five months out in California and other places. So you, so you have done your research. So I saw an article and I thought she'd be good to throw in there Let's and see. with Ben Affleck. So okay. falling out of escrow three times already on like a $60 million property, 50 million and 40 million. So, so Jack Harlow is not buying a $40 million. Yeah. Episode. If I'm looking at this money I want to make, I think I am going to represent Jennifer Lopez. Well, uh, that's a good point. Falling, I can fall out of escrow 20 times if you buy a $60 million property. <laughs> uh, whether it's annoying or not, well, I'll put up with it. Combining their two incomes was a good was a good look there. Yeah, so I'll, I'll represent Jennifer Lopez, the refer. I'll refer Jack Harlow. Can't fire him, hometown boy. And, yeah. Uh, you got to fire Britney Spears, even though I would guess if you were looking at this straight, how much money can you make? You probably want to refer Brittany. I, I'd assume she oh, could you're buy because you're going to get paid a more it. expensive home. But uh, well, so I'm getting 25 percent on that Jennifer Lopez 60 million. Yeah, but I'll refer Jack and look at it as a investment in the future because he's only going to keep getting bigger and buying more expensive okay, homes. So. Okay. Well, you're not going to get referrals on this next deal though. So uh, once you refer him to a good agent, the the, the referrals stop there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. All right. All right. All right. Um, yeah, I, I had a little I, more knowledge. I think you had here. the inside knowledge, the inside scoop. I should have thought about that though. Sixty million, man. Come on. Yeah, fun game. Uh, we'll keep doing this one. If if any of the <laughs> listeners have people we should do, you know, we'll yeah, throw them there. Definitely send them to us. So, all right, we're going to move on to the L.A. mansion tax. Have you heard about this yet? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So here's what the L.A. mansion tax is. Uh, the measure calls for a four percent transfer tax on real estate sales above five million. And a five and a half percent tax on sales above ten million, compared with the current 045 percent tax. So they say prices were slashed. So this went into effect April first, and right before it happened, they say prices were slashed, escrows were rushed, and everything sold like really, really quickly. People were offering exotic cars and bonuses, anything they could to get their, their house moved before this tax went into place. Yep. So they said on April 1st, everything froze. Uh, sellers now faced with paying the tax that they sold, yanked their properties off the market, discounted prices, uh, which were valid only if the deal was done by March. Uh, and then basically they say everything completely froze with sales. Then there was like 130 homes that sold in these price ranges in April. And in March, only two sold. You, I mean that that's the definition of borrowing sales forward, right? I think I think people like to think of it in terms of booms and busts, right? Markets, but when there are incentives, external in, external like motivating factors that that enter in to the equation. You know, we've had uh, first time home buyer stimulus. We've had you know things like that, like affect the market at wide uh, at large, but. Uh, you're borrowing a lot of times you're borrowing sales forward and that uh, is is a frustrating to real estate professionals obviously it's frustrating to sellers that have to get ready faster than they need to it's frustrating to buyers having to contend with escalated demand and competition it's just like it's not a free market anymore when you impose restrictions like this. And I can tell you that I have firsthand knowledge. Well, I guess it's secondhand knowledge technically shared from some friends that are real estate professionals in California uh, that they've experienced a crazy slowdown this summer in the last 30 days. Specifically, they had a rush. Uh, things in January and February were very slow. You saw and we even did some videos and I had some talking points on East Coast real estate being very healthy while as whereas West Coast real estate had become slow that reversed in latter part of March and now April 1 
they saw a dramatic slowdown. Yeah, I know you have a lot of friends that are brokers across the country, mm-hmm. and I know California. So I was just curious if you've you've heard them talk about this or yeah, looked into it. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you're doing this calculus, right? If you've got a house that's roughly ten million dollars, can I list it at nine nine? I mean, there's there's additional so. There's even been situations where there was a lot of competition. So imagine a lot of stuff on the market trying to sell before April 1. You get multiple buyers interested at 9.9. There were even situations where buyers were giving sellers non-monetary incentives just so that the transfer price didn't go above 10. So house at 10.5, let's say, $500,000 above you had buyers trying to compensate the seller with $500,000 of non-monetary type goods, just values. Like, like I'm going to give you my Bentley and 9.9 for this house. It wasn't just the seller incenting the buyer. It went in both directions. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Kind of, hard, kind of hard to imagine sitting here in Louisville, Kentucky, selling $175,000 houses, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think it'll, I think the housing will pick back up, but whole purpose of this tax is to help with uh, building housing for homeless population or, um, you know, just low price housing. So yeah. uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that and update you all if anything changes. But uh, for now, we're going to move on to Peloton. So yeah. not so sure if you saw this, Peloton relaunched its workout app, has a free tier and then two tiers you can pay for. Yeah, I mean it's it's a uh, an interesting company. I was a big fan when it first started. Was an early adopter. I've sold my Peloton since. Uh, I noticed I started getting email notifications with followers after I I canceled my account when I sold my bike, um, and uh, I got uh, I got notifications starting this week of new followers on Peloton. So they reactivated my account under a free membership. I think. Yeah. So I mean, they're trying to do something here. Their their share price is down from. A hundred and sixty-seven dollars in January of twenty twenty-one to just under seven dollars a share now, so getting absolutely crushed. Yep. And then I found this interesting. So, in the last quarter, they made two hundred and ninety million from app subscriptions and lost seventeen million dollars on its hardware. Mm-hmm. So they're making all their money from their app subscriptions, and they're basically trying to become a workout app for everyone and not a hardware company anymore. Well, and that, that the writing was on the wall. The bike was really good when it came out. There was nothing like it. There was no, you know, screen enabled, you know, me- I was a fan because of the, me- I, I dig the metrics, man. Like all the stuff, like you can't get from just riding a Schwinn spin bike with an iPad. Like it just doesn't have the inputs. Like it collects data like crazy. And there was, there was something cool about it, but, um, you know, for me, the classes got old really fast. Uh, the instructors barking at you, like really got old fast. Like the music was cool for a while, but then like somebody else DJing your workout was kind of, kind of, kind of a struggle for a while. Yeah. You know, I have one I don't use anymore. My, my wife does. I do think it gets old having to do a hardcore workout every single time, but, um, uh, yeah, we'll see, see if it works out for them. We're going to cut to a couple ad sponsors here. And we'll come back talking about the Netflix password sharing. And I got a kind of a personal business question for Jay coming up. So we'll see you in a sec. This is the Jay Pitt Show. I'm your co-host, Ryan Harris. Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. And we're back, folks. Welcome back to the Jay Pitt Show. Talk Radio 1080. Appreciate you joining us. We are now going to talk about a little bit of Netflix password sharing. Ryan, how are they going to crack down on that? I really don't. I really don't see it. I think they definitely can. It's just IP addresses. It's the same way Hulu does it. I mean, Hulu does it pretty well. You can change your location every every couple of months. Um, you can still use it traveling on apps. They they had some problems with that when they beta did the beta testing. I think it's all figured out now. So I think people very soon that are logged into their parents' Netflix accounts, I'm talking about myself right now, uh, are going to see themselves signed out. Uh, you know, Netflix, they even said that they anticipate people canceling in the beginning and then re-signing up. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I, I think that, I, you know, the thing about Hulu, and I don't know, you tell me, I've never been a huge fan of Hulu. Uh, I've always been a Netflix, a Netflix subscriber. Um, 
I can only imagine that there's some other th- I mean, like, they don't want 100% enforcement. I'll give you another example. Um, I recently had a identity theft kind of scare. Nothing crazy. Just uh, password compromise. They sent me a new credit card. So, you know, it's the annoying thing. You got to go around and change all your subscriptions to the new card. And, of course, you forget some. You don't have a comprehensive list. And I get notifications from, let's say, Netflix. I get notifi- notifications from HBO Max or Disney Plus or whatever. It's not HBO Max anymore. It's just, just Max. Max. Yeah. I saw a funny meme. It's like uh, from the Facebook movie. It said, just drop Facebook. It's simpler. <laughs> just drop yeah, the He HBO. told him to drop the yeah. and make it Facebook. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, so here's here's what I realized in that. They, they didn't have a good credit card to pull my payment when my payment was due. And there was a couple of times when I went in and I was like, oh, man, I I don't have my credit card on me or, you know, whatever. I asked my wife to do it and she forgot. And I mean, it went probably two or three weeks and they didn't shut me out. They didn't log me off. They didn't tell me. So I get I think these companies do understand, okay, that these services are really folded into the fabric of your everyday in a lot of cases. And they want people watching Okay, Absolutely. and they're not going to alienate future subscribers. They're going to take a soft touch when it comes to this. Is my guess. They're not going to kick you off immediately. Yeah, right. They're going to find every way they can to give you some loophole, so that you want you don't get upset with them, and then use that as that anger to not subscribe in the future. I think you're going to end up subscribing. I agree with that, but they have to do it really. There has to be a really light touch. Yeah, I think they have a good, pretty good plan in place. I'm sure they've done a ton of testing and what what's our best option moving forward. And what they're going to allow paying customers to do is add another member for eight more dollars a month. Yeah, which I'm sure in six months that eight dollars will be ten dollars, and that ten dollars is probably going to be twenty dollars. And once you're used to paying something, you know your subconscious it's like well, what's what's two more dollars? Well, and it's like when I got off cable, I was saving a hundred dollars a month with you know, all the streaming apps. And now I'm paying just as much. Tell you what's funny. Whenever I buy like a, uh, like a $10 beer at a, a sports game, I'm like, uh, huh? Or uh, let me rephrase. Whenever I'm buying like a $10 subscription to something, I'm like, uh, that's one beer at a Louisville game. <laughs> cause, cause you're not going to a Louisville game to not have a beer. I, right. I, I, I can get that. I was at the Cincinnati Reds game the other night, like same exact situation. Yeah. So, all, all right. right. Through all the, the company stuff, Let's talk about, or I got a, I got a question for you, Jay. So this popped into my head. I thought it was kind of interesting. Not sure what you're going to choose, mm-hmm. but if you had to make a choice, would you choose to rebuild your brokerage from the ground up or would you choose to build your real estate portfolio from the ground up again? You get to keep the other. You just right. have to choose one to build up again. Um, th- it, this seems obvious to me, and, and this may be a foolish answer, and it may just reflect some kind of irrational or emotional kind of, um, you know, irrational kind of emotional, you know, attachment to certain concepts. But I think I would choose the brokerage. Um, to build up again? To rebuild. I'm presuming that I'm still me and I've I've achieved what I've achieved. It's just like it goes away today and I got to start over tomorrow, right? The real estate portfolio was purchased mostly at prices that we'll never see again. Yeah. Okay. I can find more agents. I can go back to repping clients every day and taking listings and selling houses rather than coaching and mentoring. Uh, I can do that relatively easy. I don't want to, right? I don't want to. Um, Also, I guess the way I look at this is the brokerage, the sales, the, the being an agent part to me, the being a broker part to me is generating active income. I can generate active income a lot of different ways. I've proven that. Um, but the portfolio is wealth building. It's what you do. It's what you do with the income, if that makes sense. So um, I, I think that's a lot harder to rebuild. I don't think I get as far as fast. I think if I needed to start an investment portfolio today, I'm I'm going to start it very differently than I used than I than I did when I started. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. That's where I thought you were going to go. I guess uh, if you look at it from 
I wasn't sure if you're going to look at it, people you know from building the brokerage now and the agents you met through it. Uh, but, you know, if you're looking at it strictly what's going to be easier to build again, it's definitely probably that brokerage for you. I, th- now. I think it is. I mean, it's it's hard to build what we have. So, I mean, I'd be hesitant to lose either, obviously. I mean, I worked really hard at both. I just don't think I don't I don't even know that I would go at real estate investing the same way that I did then with the same interest level. I think I might try something different. Um, the brokerage could be the same answer, kind of. I mean, I, there's a lot of acquisition opportunities that exist. If, if I had to start from scratch, I might look into that. Mm-hmm. Um, you or, know, would you choose to be an influencer? Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, yeah, maybe, but uh, no, if the wh- videos keep doing well, the, the, well, yeah. And we can always do that. That's a, that's a part of what we do. But I mean, I could go buy companies. There's, there's a lots of brokers that want to get out because this is a, this is a young person's game. You know, when you get older, it gets harder and people have, have a hard time having the energy for it. Um, if, if I'm still who I am achieved what I've achieved and, you know, have the reputation that I have. I mean, there's a lot of ways I could go, I could go buy a brokerage and I could have a hundred agents again tomorrow. Yeah. Be a lot harder to go buy a hundred homes. Yeah. A hundred houses is a lot, a lot different at a interest rate of, I mean, who knows what you have them at. I'm well, it's I mean, pretty dang you good. could still do it. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, I've got some completely paid for. I have some with no loans and I have some, you know, cause they were p- purchased at prices where it was plausible to pay cash and the rest of, you know, financed it you know, three, four or five percent. Yeah. And let's be honest, owning a brokerage is way more stressful than having rentals that once you've built up to a certain point and it, it pe- can be people managing them. It can be. I mean, you know, if, if the brokerage was gone tomorrow, I mean, I could go run our property management business. I could make mm-hmm. make a good living. I could go make investments, flip houses. I mean, I got a call on the way over here about a potential investment. Those, those opportunities still exist. They're just not the same as they once were. You know, I think today what you'd have to do is you'd have to leverage more than I did before. You'd have to borrow more money. So it'd be riskier. And I think there are some arbitrage opportunities like at slightly higher price points. Like I started off with really inexpensive real estate and I levered up, you know, and I, I kind of walked my way up the scale. So to some more expensive stuff, but you know. Yeah. So I got a couple things we can maybe finish off here in the last couple of minutes. Uh, so make it your choice. I saw Zillow Premier Agents is completely finished now. Uh, actually, not necessarily. Not. So so, so far, um, and this is a, this is a good you know current event. This actually broke today. Right. Story actually broke today, and um, test they're testing Denver and Raleigh Durham only starting next month. They're canceling uh, lender co sponsorships, and they're canceling all Premier Agent pay as you go contracts. So those of you that don't know, you're not an agent. Zillow is the most highly trafficked real estate website. You probably know that if you're a consumer listener. Uh, But what you may not know is that Zillow is a marketing company. They have agreements with real estate brokerages. They are in fact a real estate broker and a member of most MLS systems nowadays. So they get the listings, they put them out to the consumer, they get the eyeballs on it from a variety of marketing tactics, television, et cetera. And then they take, when you request information about a property, they take that interaction, they give it to a real estate broker or a real estate agent for a fee. Okay. That's called being a premier agent. You're an agent that pays money for those connections. Okay. Zillow recently went and we are one uh, to something they call the flex program where they refer those clients as a real estate broker to a broker and receive a percentage of the commission earned when the broker sells property. Um, they're going to referral relationships only in test markets of Denver and Raleigh Durham. Presumably they will like what they see and they will go nationwide with that. Now we were the 25th flex partner in the country. The first in the state of Kentucky, uh, JT Pitts and associates was. So this could be a very good thing for us. I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. They chose uh, two cities very far apart. Those are actually uh, pretty pretty typical test markets for that. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Both hot markets, both hot markets. We don't have a lot of time left, so we can't talk about it. But, uh, the other, other thing I was going to mention was, did you hear the Bellarmine news this morning that broke today too? I heard that. A vote of no confidence in president. Oh, wow. Yeah. I did not hear that. And apparently two other officials or 
people at Bellarmine. So it's be interesting to see how that plays out. But I'll, I'll let you take take us out from here. Yeah, uh, folks. Don't have um, much time left. No, nah, we'll, we'll 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 follow these stories and you know get you more information. Obviously, Bellarmine is near and dear to our hearts, so we're watching and and, and learning as you do. But as always, we appreciate you tuning in um, right here to the J Pitt Show on Talk Radio 1080. We will catch you next week. Uh, have a great weekend.